Hey everybody, it's Mike from Here the Watchman, and here we are. It's Saturday, so every Saturday uh, I get together with my brother from another mother who uh, lives in England. His name is Mark Sutherland. Mark, thank you so much for joining with us today. Absolute pleasure, my dear brother from a different mother across the pond. Fantastic <laughs> to be with you again. You know, folks, I mean, we're, we're coming at you today, and, and this is, I mean, it's an exciting day for me, actually. Uh, you know, I was talking to Mark before we came on air. Uh, I'm going to find out today whether I will have a grandson or a granddaughter. Now, what does that really mean? It means that whatever God gives us, we are so blessed. I mean, it, it, but it's really truly interesting uh, how it feels to be a grandparent. I mean, there's lots of grandparents out there, right? I mean, a lot of you guys are already grandparents, so you get it. But if you're not, you can't possibly understand how that feels. It, 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 it is an incredible gift that God gives us. Uh, he doesn't care how much we screwed up in our lifetime. He, he just blesses us with that. And, and I'm just, uh, it's going to be a big day. One o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I'm supposed to find out. Uh, I told my son, uh, I said, I hope you're not doing one of those gender reveal parties. Because if you are, I'm going to come kick your butt. Uh, and, 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 you know, and he said, no, dad, it's just, that's when our doctor's appointment is. So, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that, but you know, Mark and I do this show every week. Uh, and it's kind of funny. Last week we did a show and I made a reference to a person, uh, from Michigan who is serving uh, in our government, and I made a reference to her regarding the fact that she wore something over her head that we dried off with every day when we take a bath or a shower, and, and I made that comment. Uh, now, since I made that comment, our video in our interview, what Mark and I were talking about, was completely censored and taken down. Now, what I want to say to all of you today is my father, uh, who would be 104 years old today if he was still alive, uh, after Pearl Harbor, which we can all, like, you know, do the conspiracy thing about and say that it was fake and blah, 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 it doesn't matter. The day after Pearl Harbor, my father went down and enlisted and served and defended our country uh, for years until the war was over. I mean, he, he wasn't like, oh, you go do like two years and then you come home. No, he went and served until the deal was done. He would be so angry today to know that something that I said was censored and taken down. He'd be, he, he, he's rolling over in his grave. He's, he's like, I put my life at risk for, for our freedom, and now they're doing this to you. But you see, folks, this is the what's happening in our world today. This is... Uh, you know, we, we, I, I am afraid to say that we are going to become a socialist nation. Why? Because we have a bunch of young pukes who are college. Look at, look at what happened this week here in the States, Mark, uh, with the college scandal. I mean, you know, oh, uh, people with mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. are paying to get their kids mm -hmm. in college mm -hmm. and they don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's been going on forever, but... Uh, you know, what can I say? I mean, what, what I can say is, where have we gone? Not just as the United States, but as in the world. Where have we gone where we don't think 
our children should have to pony up and work. They should have to get a job. Why do we think that we should pay for their education? Why do we think, uh, and we're guilty of that. Jeannie and I are totally guilty of that. But uh, why do we think that we should coddle them and, 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 and like give them money and, and give them housing and stuff like that? What happened to the days, mm. like my dad said to me, when I graduated from high school, and I, I, I lived in, we lived in a beautiful home uh, in, in, down in San Clemente, California, right at the beach, right? And I graduated from high school, and my dad said, okay, so down the street is the Marine Corps, Camp Pendleton. You want someone to take care of you? Go down there, enlist. Or you can go to college, and I'll help you out. I'll pay your tuition, but that's it. And mm. I, I weighed one thing and another, and I said, well, well, and this was right after Vietnam, right? I mean, I was a, uh, I graduated from high school in 1977. And uh, I was like, kind of like, ooh, wait a minute, okay. I'll go down there and they'll tell me to scrub the bathroom with a toothbrush. Or <laughs> you're saying like you'll pay my tuition and I just have to get a job to pay my rent and buy my books and all that. And he was like, yeah. But the bottom line was, dude, you're not going to live here. You're done. Yeah. You've had 18 years. I've taken care of you. This is the way it's going to be. You know, so... Uh, uh, that's that's where I am this week, Mark. In in England, you you guys are like a mess right now. I'm sorry to say that, but you're a mess. I mean, Theresa May, uh, what what is the whole thing going on with Brexit? I th you don't have to apologise for saying that we are a mess because you're absolutely right. First of all, I'd just like to say, you know, I thank you, thank you for your uh, father's service to your country, and also as. Uh, my uh, my one of my grandfathers was in uh, in the home garden. My other grandfather served on a British naval ship during the Second World War. This is the reality, and the reason why we're saying that is the fact that, you know, in, in 1944, many many American uh, soldiers went on to Omaha Beach and Gold Beach, particularly with Omaha, if I remember, is is and uh, suffered great losses for an invasion of Europe and to bring a freedom of speech and to bring freedom, but freedom back and to actually release France from the tyranny under the Nazis. And let's just remind ourselves, as we segue into this, Nazi means the National Socialist Party. Now, let's make it very, very clear, and I stand by this, it, uh, under no, be, people to be under no illusions that the European Union is the Fourth Reich. We don't have time to necessarily go into that or for me to fully explore that, but people will see what is happening as we see tyranny. So after the uh, after the Second World War, with the Marshall Plan about rebuilding rebuilding uh, the uh, Europe, the Marshall Plan was not was named after George Marshall, but that plan was given by him by Jean Monnet, one of the architects of the European Union, and um, William F. Jasper wrote a book called Step by Step to Tyranny in 1992. I've had the privilege uh, to be on a radio show with that amazing guy. Get hold of that book. Get hold of a second-hand copy of that book. He, he talks about this. He talks about the European Union as well, was well ahead, and the UN in regard to global governance. And the EU is a leg of global governance. That's it, period. So it's no wonder there is a huge fight going. So Jean Monnet giving George Marshall the Marshall Plan, Ted Heath, who took us in in 1973, was his, one of his mentors was Jean Monnet on the night that we were tricked really into going in and we lost our sovereignty, even though Heath denied it. Um, Jean Monnet, I believe, according to the book of the History of Europe and the Great Deception, was actually in the gallery within Westminster watching how this was played out. And the reason why, Mike, I talk about the history is because we forget the history. The history is so important to what's happening now. And that's why I'm extremely, extremely passionate about it. Yeah, but Mark, Mark, I, 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 I don't mean to interrupt you here, but, but you're, you're on something right here. And that is that people today could care less about history. 
No. They don't understand. I mean, and, and especially these, you know, young people uh, who I'm going to call little fairies, uh, you know, they think that <laughs> everything should be given to them and they shouldn't have to work. They don't understand that on your side of the pond and on my side of the pond, people died. People mm -hmm. gave their lives to defend what you and I are talking about right now. And, and, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. It's serious right now. I mean, mm -hmm. as Paul mm -hmm. Begley says, are you serious? Mm -hmm. It's serious mm -hmm. right now. I mean, we are. Well, it's, it's, yeah. 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 Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. And sorry, it's profoundly serious. And the reason why it's profoundly serious is because this week we are now bordering on and seeing the democracy of this country completely and utterly overruled and undermined. That's it. In the fact that 17,410,752 people with a majority of over a million voted to leave the European Union on, uh, in June 2016. That was a mandate that was given. What's very, very interesting as a piece of paper that's gone out, and I put it on my Facebook page today, to say that the government would respect the decision. Right. Well, the government aren't respecting the decision. Basically, within Westminster, you what people would watch the BBC political show uh, and the comedy hour, which I think at times over the last few, uh, I say it if it wasn't so serious over the last few days within Westminster, you see it. The mother of all parliaments, as John Hayes, a brilliant MP in a speech this week, said about representing, you know, he is uh, he is for the people, by the people, and representing the people and the people's decision. That's what he said. And the decision was that we would leave. And basically, we are seeing a total and utter construct of many, many civil servants within, gov within our government process colluding against the people's vote. And I cannot sit here and not be passionate and not start to get bordering on fairly irate, and my blood pressure is very much under control. But you're right. The fact is there doesn't seem to be any uh, major sort of concern over this within certain groups of people. But I will also encourage you and say there are a number of young people over here, many young people who actually see it for what it is. And also what is interesting is the fact that those people that did vote to remain, a number of, I would say, quite a lot of those people have actually come over to the Brexit camp big time. Now, this week, shenanigans going on. So Tuesday, the Parliament then has a vote and Mrs May brings her deal again. That deal would leave us as a vassal, total and utter vassal state. It would be leaving the EU in name only. And we would be still contributing financially, massively, uh, all, all over the place to the European Union. That deal was then voted down. So it then went to on Wednesday to have a vote about whether the no deal should come off the table. And 410 MPs, so on the Tuesday, she lost the vote by 169. She actually did better than the last time, but it's irrelevant. But the other thing is on Wednesday, 410 MPs, 410 MPs in the Westminster Parliament that um, is basically a Remainer Parliament inside a Brexiteer country. You know, the, the Westminster Parliament model in Legoland has more power than it does because it's given it all to the EU in 1973. They then voted to take, and I'm trying not to swear, to take the no deal policy off the table. We needed to just leave. We don't need a deal. We will just, we should just leave. Then last night, on Thursday night, they then have a vote to extend Article 50, and Article 50 was the deal that was put through that, that says under the Lisbon Agreement that we are giving the EU notice that we are leaving. We just leave. And what we've got is a bunch of treasonous, treasonous MPs who will not respect the decision of the people. We have this going on on both sides. I'm going to get to a book, if I can, in, in, in a short period of time, because one thing that I constantly go on about is the parallels of what is going on over here with you guys in the wonderful uh, United States of America and also in Canada at the moment and other parts of the world where we have a massive lefty Marxist push where 
You raised about young people in regard to history, forgetting history. Well, the history books, of course, are changed. And the history books go, oh, Stalin, that was all, you know, many, many years ago. And the purges that he did in 1938 of his equivalent of the Politburo and all these other people that helped to put him in, all the other people that helped a massive Marxist takeover. Oh, that's just in history. That isn't going to happen. That's not a reality. Well, I'll tell you now, young people, that the EU is not going to be the EU that you have got used to over the last few years. You have people like Vostat in the European Parliament calling for the United States of Europe, that all the 27 countries um, would then give up the sovereignty of them as a nation and give it over to the EU. I come back to this. In 1973, we were never asked that. We then had a referendum and it still got through and basically people were told lies and there also we did not join the european union we joined a common market where we could trade with countries with low tariff barriers and the problem is mike you and i know history and i and you know that and you know on this particular subject i look into that that's all i'm talking about and um, well but mark i mean that's we're not that's given because that kind of that's platform. because when, when we were raised when you and i were raised our parents told us history was important, that we needed to look back at what had happened. I mean, all these, I mean, I didn't, and God bless this, like, sissy generation that we've created, which is all our fault. <laughs> uh, God bless them. I mean, they, they, they can't go to the bathroom by themselves. Um, but, I mean, if you look at what, what, history says and you look at uh, uh, Stalin and Hitler and you, then you look at uh, mm. uh, in our country right I mean I mean your country is Theresa May but in our country and your PMs I mean but in our and in in Canada it's that like okay it's probably gonna get this video taken down but that fag boy uh, well, don't, don't, Trude go there, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> Trudeau. I mean, if you look at if you don't look go at you what's mean the going boy, on the boy in blunder. Canada, you mean the boy blunder. Yeah. If yeah. you look at what's going on in Canada, yeah. right? I mean, uh, what's happening with our leaders today, who have no respect for what happened in history? They don't know it. They don't look at it. They don't care about it. I mean. Uh, listen, I have I have a couple of great kids that 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 I had nothing to do with. They they did everything on their own. Uh, my daughter will will be going to medical school here uh, next, uh, I think in August, uh, on her own. My son has his whole life on his own. But both of them, when I sit down and talk with them. They will both say, hey, Bernie Sanders has some great ideas. And it's like, what are you talking about? And, and I think that's what's going on in the world today. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what they're talking about. And a wonderful article that was written by Stella Morabito in uh, March 15, 2016. And I, I put this on my Facebook page. Uh, page today. Socialism, bloody history shows millennials should think twice before supporting it. And just read this. Socialism is a bait and switch scheme. Socialism and communism both involve ceding to the state control over the distribution of goods and services for the masses. This involves giving up individual rights and giving the state a good measure of control over our personal lives. This road always leads to tyranny, no matter what you pave it with and no matter what you name it. Socialism requires a power clique, or as Lenin put it, an elite vanguard in order to pretend to function. And that's the problem we have over here, my dear brother, is that people are going, uh, we want to give the, everything to the government because the government will give everything back to us. And as, as the, uh. the great Ronald Reagan says, the government that gives you everything is also a government that can take everything away. Amen. And it is, the thing is, tra traditionally... It has been about having a clear debate about ideas. But the problem is now, and you raised this before we came on air, 
The problem is now is that having a debate about ideas is being pushed off the table because they want to censor our ideas. They want to censor that. So then putting it, this is the important thing that we have to do and that you and I are, are struggling with on one level, but it's also why I'm segueing into this. It's also why, not deliberately, but, it, but it's important. That's why we're gathering in in in, uh, in Dallas in uh, in two weeks' time, of sounding the alarm of where we of where we are at. Nearly four years ago, when President Trump was elected, we did not expect to be in the position that we are, because what happened, and those of us that always knew, we always knew that we had to keep our foot on the gas and many people have taken their foot off the gas but basically all hell is breaking loose across the world and we see this great falling away within the church we have to say it how it is but it's all predicted within scripture and we have to put this in this scriptural context and it isn't as much as i have to battle with myself constantly with this being a fairly political animal but politics the spiritual battle has now totally and utterly come into the spiritual fear that the uh, that it is so bursting from the second heaven into the first into our world. That's how it's playing out massively, and and our what is our job, as a dear friend pointed out to me today, is that we have to get everyone into the Jesus lifeboat as much as possible. People don't want to discuss biblical prophecy. They don't want to discuss the fact that the Bible, 25, 30% of it, is prophecy. We can see it. The EU is wanting, I'm just going to say this, the EU is wanting to create, is taking 1984, which is not supposed to be a manual, and creating and following that literally as a manual. So truth is treason in the empire of lies, and to shut down the ideas. It's an atheistic, humanistic construct. It's exactly what's going on within the leadership of the Democratic Party on your side of the pond. Amen. I mean, you're right, Mark. I mean, and it's sad because if you think about it, uh, back in the day when my father went down and enlisted, uh, back in the day <clears throat> when you and I were young, it was all about God, country, and family. That was the way it was. Mm -hmm. That's what you did. Mm -hmm. That's the way you lived your life. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know. But today, uh, we don't do that. And it's it's. Uh, and I'm I'm telling you, folks, it's largely our fault, mostly our fault. I mean, because uh, you have children today who are now, you know, young adults, who you told your entire life, you're the chosen one, you're so special. I mean, everybody gets a trophy. Whether you win or you lose, it doesn't matter, you still get a trophy. Um, I'm sorry, but but that's not life. Life... No, it isn't. It, is, it isn't life. And no. you don't have to apologize. No. It isn't life. No, it's just not life. I mean, so if, if, if you have a young child today and uh, they're a soccer player or a football player or a baseball player and, and they lose, they suck at what they do, you don't give them a trophy. What you tell them is the difference between winners and losers is what a loser does yep. when they lose. That's the difference. Mm. I mean, you, mm. you know, if mm. you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and fly right. If mm. you can, if you can do that when you fail miserably, because uh, you know Teddy Roosevelt actually said it best uh, when he gave his speech about the arena. You know, it's not the man that wins, and I'm going to butcher this, but it's not the man that wins that counts. It's the man who's in the arena who fails time and time again, whose blood and sweat lays on the floor of that arena who valiantly mm -hmm. understands when he wins what a win really is you know that mm -hmm. that is what mm -hmm. counts but you know today we don't do that i mean we're we've left that and 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 that's why we have 
uh, Theresa May. That's why we have uh, Alexandria uh, Ocasio Cortez. That's why we have <laughs> that that woman that wears something over her head that I use to dry myself off every morning. That's why we have that. That's why that's going on. But the problem is our youth today on your side of the pond and on our side of the pond, they love that. They love the fact that, oh, we're going to all be one kumbaya uh, let's all be together. Now, yeah, they it's do. All, they it's do. all good. They do, my brother. Sorry to interrupt. No, yeah. it's all good yeah, though, Mark. They do, but... it, it's all good until you, uh, like I'll tell you right now, with my kids, uh, my own kids, and my stepkids. Uh, if I sat my stepkids down in our house and I said to them, uh, "Okay, so give me everything you have. Give me your phone." Give me your uh, your your AirPod thingies or the, the you know that. Give me that, and give me all the money you have in your pocket, and let's put it all out on the table. And then we're going to take that, and we're going to divide it up evenly between all of us. They would look at me and say, "We're calling the cops." You know, they 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 would no way in the world would they do that, yet. They will vote for Bernie Sanders. Well, but, but because but absolutely, and and I think I, I want to spin this around in a slightly different direction. You're right. Yes, it co does come down to us. But the fact is, is where is the the so-called church in all of this? Where is God's people in this? Frankly, yes, that's you and I. That's Jeannie. We're here. Where is the church in this? And on many, many issues that are happening today, as you as you guys on your side of the pond use that wonderful phrase that whenever, you know, all you're all we're doing is hearing crickets. Right. right. Judgment starts in the house of God. Judgment starts in the house of God. Where are Christians leading the way here, pointing things out, sounding the alarm? I'm talking to myself on that. There are times I think there's nowhere near I'm doing. I am doing enough. We just have have our have our small reach and if every person ha was reaching out into their small spheres then we would make a massive massive difference but our country is back at a time of like john wesley one of the greatest preachers ever lived we are that is where we're at total society chaos division and all the rest and what's happened is that we have given everything over to the state and John Wesley knew this. I just want to finish this. John Wesley knew this, as in George Whitfield and others, that the only, only way to change it was the second birth by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And Amen. Yeah, your Savior, your Savior, and your Lord. We know a lot of, dis we know a lot of uh, converts, but we don't know many disciples. That's the key thing. And also, and also, Mike, that very often within the church, it wants people of a type where they're all nice. You know, there's no jagged edges. Well, uh, there's quite a few jagged edges on me. And I know there's quite a few jagged edges on you. Oh, it's not on. a criticism. It, it's not a criticism. <laughs> it's who we are. In other words, we we've lived, you know, we have life experience. And we've had we've had life experience and people just want everything to be nicey, nicey. Kumbaya, let's sort out the tea rotor. I don't have any time for that. That's what I don't participate in it. Well, but so the thing is, Kip, Mark, Kip, I mean, the, the thing is, you're right. You and I both have some jagged edges. But the thing is, when we fell down, who picked us up? We did. God did. I mean, that's, that's the way it worked. But today, uh, if someone falls down, they think, oh, where's, you know, where's Alexandria? I mean, who's going to pick me up? <laughs> How about you just yeah, pick well, your uh, own, absolutely. just get Abs your own ab butt absolutely. off the ground? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, absolutely. And, and that's the thing. And, and I, yeah, I, I have fallen out recently with so-called two friends of mine because I've just gone, I've had it. I've just had enough of you, uh, not getting off your bum and, make, and making something happen or just relying on the state permanently or just refusing one job after another. I'll just say it how it is. That's the reality. 
you well, know, now, we're all okay, so I know I l- l- yeah. let, me, let me tell you how it used to be. Okay, so uh, I think I was, I'm going to be 60 here in uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I was, I was turning 30. Uh, right. And I worked on Wall Street, and I made a ton of money, but I didn't pay my taxes. So mm-hmm. it was April, and I owed the IRS a ton of money. And I called my dad, who was, you know, a successful entrepreneur and businessman and had, had way more money than any of us should ever have. And I called him, and I told him this story about how, gosh, Dad, I, I owe all this money to the IRS, and they're, they're coming after me, and, and uh, i got to figure out what I'm going to do. I need X amount of money to pay them off, thinking that my dad would say, oh, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll send you a check, <laughs> right? You know what my dad said to me? He goes, wow. He goes, that's a big problem. Let me know how it works out. You know, and, 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 you know, that's yeah. the deal. I mean, the deal is if you're a man or a woman, I mean, because Jeannie's listening to this in the background. So I got to say, if you're a woman uh, and you have, you have to stand on your own two feet. You can't rely on the government or anyone else to bail you out. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. That's just the way I feel. What do you say? Well, yeah, no, I agree, and I agree. I've certainly uh, uh, brought my uh, kids up to have a good uh, a good work ethic, and actually, no. And the thing is, nothing nothing is easy. Every you have to work at it. I mean, I will say this from experience. You know, if you the last thing you want to do, if you want an easy life, the last thing you want to do is want to make films or be passionate about making <laughs> films. The last thing I'm, I'm telling you now, that's the last thing you want to do, because actually trying to raise the money for it, and and get it out there and compl- and do it and and think, oh, we can do this in a very short space space of time. You have got to be got to be joking. Well, you it could be worse, be though, joking. Mark. You could be doing conferences. <laughs> you could you could be trying to gather God's people. <laughs> yes, but, you know, and, I mean, and, and wondering. Uh, yeah, you did share you did share some hilarious emails with me yeah. this week. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to mention those unless you wanted to. But it is it is extremely funny. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I will I will mention people... the one email that I got. I will mention one of them, which was about <laughs> Carl Gallops, where someone mm. said to me, Carl Gallops used to be a police officer and I don't get along well with police officers. And the only <laughs> thing that I could respond back was I don't either, but he hasn't arrested me yet. You know, I mean, uh, I, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, but, but, but let's look at this. I mean, what, you know, we've ranted now for uh, 33 minutes about everything that's going on in the world. Uh, I understand that we don't, you and I both believe that the youth today is a mess. Uh, just like I'm sure uh, my dad thought about all of us. He thought we were a mess. I mean, it was the 70s, right? I don't, we were... I don't, I don't think. I don't think. I don't think everyone's a mess within within youth. I will say youth. I will say that because I know some of them that do have that that are, that are slow. Well, are fastly coming round to that conservatism is the new counterculture, as John Paul Joseph yeah. Watson yeah. brilliantly, uh, Paul right. Joseph Watson just says that absolutely, and including including uh, including uh, yeah members of my family on that. And, and and knowing others, but there seems to be the vast, a massive vast vast majority. It seems like that at times, or people that think it's okay to shut down the whole of London because they've swallowed the, uh, the man-made climate change mantra that happened yesterday, etc., and all the other stuff that's going on. Anyone that seems, sorry, Mike, to cut in. Anyone who has bought into the fact that the government has to provide. Not every young person believes that but that they all have to provide. The government has to provide everything that they want. Right. I'll just well, I don't want, Mark, that. I don't want to go down another rabbit hole with you, but 
<laughs> we're gonna. Um, you know, Donald, <laughs> President Donald Trump pledged mm. a huge trade deal with Britain once mm. they left Brexit, once they left the EU. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. Theresa May, as wonderful she is, sticks her middle finger no, up <laughs> and says, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, you know what she said with that middle finger to the United States and all that. And, and, and you know what? I, I, that's all good. I mean, you guys, you guys can do whatever you want. Uh, you can, you can. Well, I don't, I don't, I mean, I mean no, I know you don't support she, it, she but I mean, I'm, all I'm saying I, is, I don't support, I don't say that. You yeah, guys, yeah. but, this but is the political uh, here's what Theresa May needs to understand, in my opinion. You're an island. Okay. Mm -hmm. You, you, you only have so much that you guys can do for yourselves. Okay. Not that you aren't capable of doing stuff, but you're an island. You're restricted. You can only grow so much food. And, and, you know, I mean, you look back, there was a great show that the BBC did. And I know you don't like the BBC, but believe me, it was a great show called Wartime Preppers. And it was a show that was basically about uh, what it was like to live in Britain during World War II. And how do you take care of yourself? And, and believe me, when that happened, and when the Germans were destroying every uh, ship that was coming in to bring, bring uh, food and, and products to Britain, you guys had to stand up to the plate and you had to make things work. And you did. And the problem that I have right now with England is that you have a woman in Parliament who thinks that she knows what's best for everyone. And she wants to be this part of the EU and all that. And all of you guys are saying, no, we want to stand on our own, like we did in World War II. We can take care of ourselves. Well, well, absolutely, absolutely. And because basically you've got a bunch of MPs. Yes, we're going down this rabbit hole. You've got a bunch of MPs who have forgotten how to run the country. They're absolutely scared of running the country expletives taken out they are absolutely scared of doing that and of course it goes back to 1955 over the Suez and the little ruckus that we had with you over that we <laughs> we have forgotten how to that we used to be trading with the work, rest of the world and we have come under god's judgment in regard to in regard to how that we are treated um uh israel in, 19, in 1948 leading up to the formation of that i stand by that we stand by that. You know, if you bless my people, I will bless you. If you curse my people, I will curse you. That's the truth of it. And you're absolutely right. We have this political elite who are basically winding down this country to hand it over to European tyranny. And if you are in a, an elitist position, you're earning X amount. And isn't it all wonderful when your house prices are going up? Well, that isn't the same for a well over half of the population in this country who wish to have self-rule and sovereignty back and know what it's all about. In none of the debates about any of this, Mike, have any of those issues ever, ever come up. And it wasn't through lack of trying because like with you over there, like over here, the mainstream media, and as you mentioned uh, thing in regard to the BBC, outside the news, the Times, it makes some great programs, but also it's programming. And it is the BBC, you know, the BBC bias corporate, the, B the bias corporation. And it has been <laughs> and it is proven to be a bias corporation in regard to this debate. Because if you then take a survey over the last 10, 15 years, put a put through by Lord Runnock, the uh, UKIP uh, Lord in the House of, in the House of Commons, sorry, in the House of Lords, he then turned around and said that out of four four thousand three hundred twenty-three odd odd guests on Radio Four, a big pilot, uh, but number one pilot uh, news show in the morning. Um, out of those guests, only 302 were uh, Brexiteers. The rest were uh, remain Remainers, right? That well, kind of yeah, thinking, pro EU. So don't tell me it's a, don't tell me it's not propaganda because yeah, it is. Yeah. No. So Mark, um, in the remaining minutes that we have left here in the show, 
uh, <laughs> we have always, as you and I do so well, I mean, we can, you and I can rant on everything that's wrong with the world today. And it's, it's pretty easy, right? I mean, it's, it's like using a shotgun, mm. you know, mm. to, to shoot a chicken. Mm. I mean, it's like, it's like easy. Mm. Uh, but what's mm. the solution? What do we do? Well, the bottom, and you're asking a very, very, uh, a very, very pertinent question, and it's something uh, I was talking. Uh, the dear Ray Gano was, uh, and I were talking about this the other week, because that's how frustration. What, what do we do? Because politically, it seems that no one is listening. Um, but we hold, and this, and I never feel an expert on this subject at all, Mike. So I'm going to try and bear with me and go in a certain direction. The bottom line is, is that we're holding, like Spurgeon did, the great uh, preacher over here, we're holding the newspaper in one hand and we're holding the Bible in another. And we are seeing biblical prophecy unfold. We are seeing things unfold as we go through the book of Daniel, as we go through the book of Revelations and etc. And we just see it. We, we cannot, anyone who can't see it, then that grieves me very, very much. Um, so what do we do? Well, we need as many people, as we said, coming to Christ as possible. Now, we've got that, which is our, our prime thing that we are called to do, is to go out into the world and make disciples and to be in every area of life. And the reason why it's a mess is because we haven't been doing that. Plus, we've then got biblical prophecy, and we see the fact that as various events go on before Jesus returns. Now, we're not you know we're not date setting or whatever but various things are happening and as ray was saying to me uh frustration as well what do what do we do well that's the prime thing that we're doing and we also have to prepare for what's coming down the line and some of this is not going to be very very funny at all and then you and i then get called conspiracy theorists and all the rest that's why on your side of the pond you have a you have a second amendment and the bunch of communists who are running the democratic party and and others it seems that even other other people that are supposedly republicans especially after they just uh, uh, voted to stop uh, the emergency pa emergency decision that president trump put in into building the southern border and now he's had to veto that and everyone moans about that but didn't the 44th president say i have a pen and a telephone i don't want to digress but it is about prayer it is getting we have to push back as much as we can uh, against these principalities and powers that have invaded our, our political system that we have allowed to do that. You know, we're called to stand. Now, I may be waffling on this because at times I'm just thinking, what do we do? What can I personally, what can I personally do? I've been having some fascinating conversations at work and then where I can, I'm bringing in, <laughs> in Jesus, saying that's my beliefs. That's what we're called to do, is to get out there. This isn't, on the one hand, this isn't going to end nicey-nicey. But we know it does because we know who wins in the end. Um, and we need to make, we know that there is, a uh, scripture says, there's a heaven and a hell, and there is a decision. A heaven has gates around it. Hell seems to have open borders. And we need to make sure that people are going through that gate into heaven not as a bus ticket, but as, as true disciples of Christ, um, as their Savior and their, their Lord. That's it. Well, um, that's what... I can't <clears throat> say any more about oh. that, Mike, really. You know, well said, Mark, well said. I mean, in the end, Jesus wins, right? I mean, that, that's the truth. I mean, we... <clears throat> excuse me. We, we can all think that uh, we have some power and all that but in the end the only one the only one who has any power at all is Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach uh, I don't care what you call him uh, mm. and that's the truth well Mark listen I mean that uh, that's going to wrap it up this week I mean uh is there anything else that we didn't rip apart today that we should talk about? 
<laughs> um, I don't think there's anything else that we, uh, <laughs> you think we, that you we, think we, uh, we think we nailed it we, all. Uh, can really, can really talk about, you know. Well, folks, I listen, think I think we've uh, we've covered the the. You want to you want to uh, you want to come out. You want to get you want to come meet Mark and I. Uh, come to Dallas, Dallas, Texas, at the Hilton DFW Hotel, uh, March twenty eighth through the thirty first. Uh, hear the Watchmen. Go to hearthewatchmen, M-E-N, dot com. You can still get some tickets. If you can't be there in person, uh, avail yourself of the live stream. Use the code HTW20. You'll save 20% off the live streaming. And if you use that same code for a physical ticket, if you want to come to the event, you'll save $20. So uh, get out there, get busy. Uh, come on out and meet Mark and I, and I'll tell you what, the first person that comes up to us and says, I listen to you guys on your show, you will be interviewed, and Mark and I will take you out for lunch. How's that? Uh, uh, I hope that's cool with you, Mark. <laughs> I don't think I have an option. We've just okay, said it li- okay. live. You've said it live, totally unscripted, <laughs> which we are always unscripted. But we don't have to tell them where we're going to ta- where we can where we're going to tape them. <laughs> no, no, that's our choice. No. What a burger's right across the street. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. guys, uh, as always here on the Washington's Report, go out there this week, make a difference, have a great week. Uh, go out there and affect a change, and most importantly, remember one thing that we always say here on the Watchman's Report. There's nothing that you can't do with Jesus in your heart, except nothing at all. So go out there, make a difference. Don't be complainers. Provide a solution. God bless each and every one of you. We'll see you next time here on the Watchman's Report.